We are at the end of the third century. The Roman Empire is at its biggest. A well-administrated structure with institutions, laws, strong military and religion, but with corruption, migrators, and other problems as well. Religion in the Roman Empire compressed the practices and beliefs in the Romans regarded as their own, as well as the many cults imported to Rome or practices of other people and provinces. Their religion could be interpreted as polytheistic. The presence of Greeks on the Italian peninsula from the beginning of their historical period influenced Roman culture, introducing some religious practices that became as fundamental as the cult of Apollo. The Romans looked for common ground between their major gods and those of the Greeks, adapting Greek myths and iconography for Latin literature and Roman art, as the Etruscans had. The Romans thought of themselves as highly religious and attributed their success as a world power to their collective piety in maintaining good relations with the gods. One way that Rome promoted stability among diverse peoples was by supporting their religious heritage. Inscriptions throughout the empire record the side-by-side -side worship of local and Roman gods, including dedications made by Romans to local gods. Christianity started in Judea, a province of the empire, as a religious sect in the first century AD. The new religion spread out of Jerusalem as more and more people became followers. Important places for Christians started to exist in Antioch and across the Levant, and even in Egypt, especially in Alexandria. In the next centuries, in the empire as well as beyond, the new cult grew more and more. Conflicts and persecutions existed, with martyrdoms occurring most often under the authority of local officials. The Christian communities in North Africa were among the earliest in the world. Legend has it that Christianity was brought from Jerusalem to Alexandria on the Egyptian coast by Mark, one of the four evangelists in 60 AD. In the early 4th century, Constantine I became the first emperor to convert to Christianity, which became the dominant religion of the empire by the 5th century. Many causes have been seen as to leading the decline of Christianity in Maghreb, one of them is the constant wars and conquests, as well as persecutions. In addition, many Christians also migrated to Europe. The church at the time lacked the backbone of a monistic tradition, and was still suffering from the aftermath of heresies. But anyway, there are reports saying that many Christians existed in North Africa. But how did this religion expand more and more in the areas where Romans ruled? Diminished fast over time, being embraced by less than 10% of the population in North Africa today. Birth of Islam, rapid expansion. The few populations of North Africa were expelled or converted to Islam. Population growth and expansion of Islam more and more. Before the birth of Islam, Arabs followed a pre-Islamic local polytheism. It's believed that Islam originated Arabia at the start of the 7th century, few centuries after Christianity started to spread. In the new religion, however, it was considered that it did not start at that moment, but was believed to be the original faith of others, whom they regard as prophets such as Jesus, David, Moses, Abraham, and others. The presence of Islam in Africa can be traced to the 7th century. On May 614, Muhammad advised a number of his early disciples, who were facing persecution by the polytheistic inhabitants of the Mecca, to seek refuge across the Red Sea of Aksum. Islam spread through military conquest, trade, pilgrimage, and missionaries. Arab Muslim forces conquered vast territories and built imperial structures over time. Most of the significant expansion occurred during the reign of Rashidun from 632 to 661, which was the reign of the first four successors of Muhammad. The first caliphate, the Rashidun Caliphate, was established immediately after Muhammad's death in 632. This dynasty is characterized by a 25-year period of rapid military expansion. Fighting both the Sassanid Empire and the Byzantine Empire by the 650s, the Caliphate, in addition to the Arabian Peninsula, had subjugated the Levant to the Transcaucasus in the north. North Africa from Egypt to present-day Tunisia in the west, and the Iranian Plateau to parts of Central Asia and South Asia in the east. It is not known for sure how they had success against these two important powerful empires. One reason could be that the Byzantines and the Sassanids were rivals, and possibly at a weak point due to their fights. In 641, during the reign of Caliph Umar ibn al-Khattab, 
Muslim troops took over current Egypt and conquered current Libya the following year. Muslims then expanded to current Tunisia, 647, during the reign of the third Muslim caliph, Uthman ibn Affan. The conquest of North Africa continued under the Umayyad dynasty, which annexed parts of Algeria around 680 CE and Morocco the following year. Beginning with the Umayyads, the title of the caliph became hereditary, and the empire expanded hugely. More and more people converted to Islam, which became a way of life for many. Unlike the Coptic Church in Egypt, or the Syrian and Armenian churches in other parts of the Middle East, the North African Church did not successfully survive. The Latin-speaking church centered in urban areas had made no significant inroads into rural areas. Also, it's believed that no major actions were made to expand Christianity to the local people. Berbers, the dominant indigenous population. More Christians of North Africa came in towns already Christian and made little attempt to evangelize pagan territory. In the caliphates, non-Arab people started to convert more and more to Islam. This happened during the Umayyad period, and then especially during more politically multicultural Abbasid period, which saw the Muslim population grow from mid-9th century to the end of the 11th century, and becoming the major religion in the area. Also, even so, large minorities of Christians continued to live in the Abbasid period. Syria may have had a Christian majority within its modern borders until the Mongol invasions of the 13th century. The divisions of the church, the internal problems, the sparsely populated harsh regions in which people lived, combined with the fall of the Byzantine Empire and their defeat in North Africa and Levant, created the situation for Christianity to be expelled from this region. Not totally, but the Christian population represented fewer people every year. Also, other reasons would be responsible for this too. Along with the fall of the Byzantines in the region and the huge expansion of Arabs, local people were high influenced by the new culture, traditions, and by the new religion. Various taxes were put on people in this time. There were taxes for non-Arabs, there were taxes for non-Muslims. Probably some pagan or Christian people chose to convert to the new religion for more benefits. Local Catholicism came under pressure when the Muslim regimes of the Almohads and the Almoravids came into power, and the record shows demands made that the local Christians of Tunis convert to Islam. Other caliphates existed and the Muslim majority became more and more stable as the population grew more and more. Muslim kingdoms continued to dominate the region for centuries to come, as many people embraced this religion beyond the former borders of the caliphates deep into the African continent, India, and even Southeast Asia. As a region stays more under an influence as the time goes by, the influence becomes stronger under Mamluks and the Ottomans as well. Muslims thrived. Even so, in the 19th and 20th centuries, European powers had colonies in these territories and many colonists settled, there wasn't a large impact. The majority embraced Islam centuries ago, and the ascent wasn't so put on religion as it was in the 6th or 7th centuries. Today, in this part of the world, large communities of Christians exist in Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more history videos and click the bell button. Also, we cannot end this video without thanking our few but very generous supporters on Patreon. Your support is much appreciated and it helps our work a lot. You can pledge your support by accessing the link down in the description. Thanks for your consideration.